Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm popping by today to showcase my final stamp release for 2023. So this is my last release for 2023 in the stamps. So I've got a beautiful collection and it includes 2A6, 2A5 and 3A7 ephemera and a washi tape as well. So first of all, I'm going to start with stamp set 1063, which is called Hellebore. Now, I just, when you see the samples, you can see that I've absolutely loved this stamp. So let's take out the stamp. I just place the plastic back in because I know what I'm like. I just end up losing this. Now, these stamps are being showcased, I'm very lucky, they're being showcased on Create and Craft TV on Monday the 6th of November and Tuesday the 7th of November. I've actually got a one day special. Um, so they're on on Monday with abs at 6pm, with abs at 9pm and I think Janet's doing Tuesday 10 and 2. So I'm very lucky I've got a one day special. Now the Hellebore is just a beautiful stamp. It's, it doesn't help with having that glare, but I will show you the samples, but it's just a beautiful stamp. It's got little, little bits of text on there and bits that you can actually cut out as well. So I'll actually measure that stamp for you. Now I'm going to try and not be too repetitive because you know by now that I always try to make sure that my stamps all work with my um, complete library of imagery. You know that by now. Um, I'm going to just measure a couple of stamps that I think just so that you can get some idea of size. So these, this, this stamp set is A5, the complete set. And this is up to that point there is five and a quarter inches in height. So that's five and a quarter inches in height. And it just gives you some perspective of the sizes. This one, this hellebore here, is sort of almost three and three quarter inches, that one. So it just gives you an idea. This one is three inches. So it just sort of gives you an idea of what they are. So I'm going to bring this in. And what you've got is if you've got a beautiful hellebore here. So if you love colouring, this is ideal for colouring. This is just for packaging purposes. It's obviously all white. Let me bring this in. Let me just bring this. There you go. You can see that there. You've got the text in there. And it's just a beautiful stamp. And I always think sometimes it's not until you actually... Um, which way am I? I had it the right way, didn't I? Oh dear me, there's no hope, is there really? That's because it's the wrong way, Tracy. Oh, dear me, I told you there was no hope. So this one offers, let's bring in the packaging. This one offers great possibilities for colouring. This one means that you can ink your stamp with different colours and you'll pick up different colours in these darker areas. This one, you can stamp in different colours and just stamp it and just stamp and you don't need any more. And you can add dimension as well. And this one gives you colouring opportunities. So I've tried to think of both. This, the wording, that one says nodding flowers and this one says hellebore. So that's stamp set 1063 and that's an A5 stamp set. Now I'm not going to sort of go on too much because you know I don't want you to get bored when I show a new release and you know I don't want to be repetitive and saying the same thing. This one is stamp set 1060 and this is an A5 stamp set and when this is stamped I have to say it is stunning. This is called Hosta. Now these are Hosta leaves from my garden and I've actually got this hosta in my garden. And now you can get hosta leaves in green, plain green. You can get them in like a yellowy green. You can get them in turquoises, like a turquoisey green colour. There's lots of colours with the leaves. I've also got some doves here. And then it says here, the changing colours of the leaves. 
and then I've got a couple of barrels for you which are in my garden so I've created a larger one and a smaller one so you you can add both if you wish and then I've got this um, background stamp so let's just take these out that background stamp when it's stamped which you'll see from my samples is stunning absolutely stunning right. so the background stamp she says as Tracy tries to get the stamp off the plastic the background stamp is just amazing and when you stamp it in colors it is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous it's got the little dove here and it's got the circle that you can cut out if you wish. It's got some of the text you can cut out. It's got little squares you can cut out. Just beautiful. Now the stamp itself is almost five inches. Five inches in height. It is fantastic. So almost five inches in height. Why do I keep doing that? So it's almost five inches in height. Now you've got two barrels. So this barrel is just two and a quarter inches in height and almost two and three quarter inches in width this little barrel is one and a half inches in height so it's lovely i wanted to have both because then it depends which project you could do also you can add both together as well we've also got these hosta leaves now the largest hosta leaf is two inches in height and then I've created smaller ones so that you've got um, a good composition if you want to create floral arrangements so you've got those three leaves as well you've got the two doves the hosta wording I just adore this stamp it's as a stamper it's just fantastic and I will show you some samples the samples that I show are all available in a workshop I've already pre-recorded the workshop and I'm really chuffed with the workshop. So this is stamp set 1060. It's A5 and it's called Hoster. We'll then go to our A6 stamps and I've got one that is Nemesia Dianthus. Now this is your Nemesia and this is your Dianthus here. And another just gorgeous stamp set. So we've got the Nemesias. Let me just measure the size of the Nemesias for you because I've used the stamp. Obviously, I've used the stamp. The mess Nemesia is two inches in height and at the widest point, two inches in width. So those are sort of the same size. But you've got one that you can colour and one you can press your stamps on, your ink pads in different colours as well. You've then got two smaller Nemesias that you can add in your arrangements or as a background element. And then your Dianthus is three inches tall. So let's bring these in. So this is three inches tall. You've got Nemesia that goes with these here. And you've got Dianthus here. And this is the Dianthus wording. And then a little note. Because if you wanted to just send a little note to somebody, you can add that little there. Just, just if you want to send something just because. So that is your Nemesia Dianthus 1061. And it's an A6 stamp set. Just love it. I'm so proud of this release. And it's the final one for 2023. I just adore it. So that's an A6 stamp set. And then I've got another A6 stamp set, which is 1062, and it's Shadowed Heart. And wait until you see this stamped. Stunning stamped. Absolutely stunning. Now it's the complete A6 stamp set. It's complete. Just take this off here. It's the complete stamp. Now, if you want to cut out life as a journey, so it's a separate sentiment, that's entirely up to you. It's your stamp. And this has got the two little doves on there. It's got some hearts. You can cut out the hearts separately. You can add little bits on their own. It is stunning when it is stamped. It is gorgeous. And I'm, I just love it. Absolutely love it. And believe it or not, it took me ages to design that and just get it right. It took me an absolute age. 
So let's place that down. So it's the complete length of the A6. So it is five and a quarter, but this very top bit here approaching five and a half. So five and a quarter in height. So let's just take that. It is just, just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Um, I may use that one. So that's the A6. And then I've got some A7 stamp sets. And this is already becoming a firm favourite. So we've got three. This one's not even pulled out of the packaging. So we've got three A7 stamp sets. We've got this one that could be a little poppy and it's got a little grass. Now this text, you're not meant to really read it, but it talks about flowers and the possibilities and in meadows. So it's meant to be a background stamp and you'll see I've used it quite a bit. This says, um, meander through the beauty of nature, but they're meant to be small sentiments so that you can just add them in the background. So this is becoming a firm favourite and this. So this is the corn flower. It's A7. It says age to perfection, corn flower. And then we've got the petunia. Today is a new adventure and then petunia. So if we turn them over, you can just, well, you can't see because I've used it so much. But this little sort of poppy type flower is around two and three quarters in height so two and three quarters in height and it's better if you look at the packaging because i've just used it so much but it's two and three quarters in height and then you've got the little grass as well you've then got your corn flowers again just gorgeous so the corn flowers are around about three inches in height around about three inches in height and you've got one that is more of a silhouette and one that you can add touches of colour to. And they stamp beautifully. I've then got the Petunia, which also goes to one of my goes with one of my other A7 stamps from a previous release, where it's got a black background and this flower in there. So this is a beautiful floral. And this is three and a half inches in height. So just beautiful. So fantastic A7 stamp sets that are beautiful in their own right, but also work with the complete release. I'll just leave that petunia out. Can't make my mind up yet. Let's just leave that there. Right. I've also got, let's bring in my little basket. I think some of this ephemera is on the one day special. I've got my clocks. So I've got some clocks. Come on, Tracy, where's the other? Why do you always lose one? Oh, that's good. Oh, honestly. You put them all in the basket, you think. And then I've gone in. Oh, there, that's because I was going to make a project with it. So I've got three ephemera that will be on the one day special. 26, 37, 20, well, 26, 27 and 37. You've got black and white, you've got coloured and you've got vintage. And these are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Just wonderful. And they work with so many projects. They're just fantastic. So I absolutely love them. They've really worked out really well. So I'm really, really pleased with those. And I've sort of tried to make them a bit vintage, so it's it's just lovely. So those will be in the show as well. So I don't know how everything's packaged because obviously that's left to all and create and create and craft. So we've got those three ephemeras that will be in the show. And then there is a washi as well. And the washi is number 82 and it is... Botanical Mainland and it's number 82 and it goes with my October release as well. So if I just open this, you can see it goes with previous releases as well, but also 
with my October release. So let's just keep, you can see it goes with my stencils, it goes with the October release. It's just gorgeous. A beautiful washi tape in sort of turquoise greens and reds with touches of white. There's sort of wording on there, beauty of nature, seeds of hope, garden, mixed in with botanical acorn, just mixed in with the washi and it is absolutely beautiful. So that I'm sure is on the show as well. And then on Wednesday, on Wednesday, Leone is doing a Let Leone Loose show. And on, Le Le on Let Leone Loose show, she's got a mix of products from different designers, but I think it's mainly ephemera. But I've got ephemera on there and I've got butterflies. And I ha even if I say so myself, these are stunning. So we've got the black and white version and it's called... Um, Acromatic acro. <laughs> I'm not even going to pronounce that. Let's just do hash 30. Acromatic acrobats. So that's hash 30. Just lovely. Hash 31 winged delights. Just, and I've coloured all them for you. And they are stunning. And then we've got aerial beauties. Hash 28. The different butterflies and then a coloured version of that one, colour in flight. And they are stunning. So I've just got those on the Let Leone Loose show, just the ephemera. My main shows are the, the one day special. I want to now show you some samples. So I've got some samples and these samples are all in a workshop called The Wonder of Nature. Workshop 101 and the workshop is £35. I'm going to show you the samples now I've made with the stamps and I have to say I have had a ball. This is a tag book that I've created and it's in the workshop and I've absolutely adored making this. I'm just going to show you the detail. Can, this is that background stamp, the circular one on the hosta and the doves. It's, they're just stunning. They've come out even better than I thought. They're just absolutely stunning. If I just open the tag book, you can see my cornflower. Just, I just adore this. Just stunning. Absolutely lovely. There's the little dove that's part grey, part green. And I just adore that. You can see some touch of stenciling in the background. I've then got the hellebore that says nodding flowers. You can also see one of my leaves in the background. Just so you can see that. The little bird from the Scarecrow, just stunning. This is that little stamp from that A7 stamp set. Let's just pick that up. This one, this is that background stamp. Again, I'm going to bore you with that one, but it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And then as we open, that is the heart background stamp that's on its own, it's an A6 stamp set. I absolutely love this and I've then added the cornflower just adore it there's that background stamp you can see a bit of my stencil in the background then you've got the dianthus and the little set of poppy type flower and the grasses and the background stamp just adore that and then the heart background just so you can see that I just tilt it there we go just so you can see the background there's that little background stamp so you can see that we've then got the other hellebore with the background stamp parts of my leaf in the background stencil the little scarecrow beard and then the back has got my stencil in the background and these little poppy type heads a little bit of the washi. I just, in fact, I don't want to give this away. <laughs> I want this back. <laughs> so that's going to the TV, that is. So I just adore that. So that is in the workshop, which is the tag book. All these samples are in the workshop. 
I've then got that background again with the hosta leaves and the piece from the uh, background stamp because this is the background stamp here with the little dove there. Then we've got the little poppy type flower. I just adore, absolutely adore the cards. I had, I just loved making these. And there's our hosta leaves. So that's one, that will be in the workshop. Then our next card, you can see I've got my stencil in the background there. One of the squares cut from the background. There's my clock ephemera, which you can see, just so you can see this. Just sort of, if I tilt it, you can see all the dimension. There's the hellebore. This is part of the background stamp. I just love it. This is my ephemera, my word one. So this is, I've got a little basket, she says, trying to be organised. Is this ephemera here, hash 35, that you can get on the All and Create website. just so you can see that i'm so chuffed with these samples i so enjoyed making them so that's another sample and then just using the heart background stamp with the sort of poppy type flower the scarecrow bird part of bits from the background just so you can see that and the only thing that's got any dimension on that is the sort of wording the rest is all flat, just so you can see. Oh, I just adore that stamp. So let's go through a bit more. So then we've got the Dianthus. And can you see my leaf in the background from October? Just there's the washi, which I adore. Just so you can see some of the detail just in there really really pleased with these so let's just put them in the order i had them before there we go let's just place them on one side and then we've got the dianthus once again with more of a mixed media type card so you can see that and there's our little barrel that's the small one the bird from the scarecrow just love it 30 days 992 stamp set in the background but that's a bit more of a mixed media feel got the little sort of poppy heads there just so you can see them let me just move that like that and you can just see the detail that's that's in there using the dianthus and then i've got like a um this is one of tim holt's etc square pieces this is also in the workshop you could quite easily just cut a piece of cardboard and this is using the nemesia so this is using our nemesia stamp set just so you can see that i always think a video just shows the samples a little bit better just so that you can see that so that's on a a board absolutely love that just to give you a bit of a more of a mixed media type thing and then you could do them both as like a gift so you could send the board and the card as like a gift and then a few more samples, not many more. This is the big hosta pot and the hosta leaves all in the pot with the hellebore. And then a little bit of my ephemera here that says hello. That's got the little barrel 
Well, that's the large barrel, that is. Just so you can see that. Let's just lift that up a little bit, just so that you can see. Just see that. I just love it. Absolutely love it. And then we've just got three more samples. This is all in the workshop. This is our hellebore. Again, with the ephemera, the clock ephemera, and the wording ephemera. The little scarecrow, bird, stencil in the background, just so you can see the stencil in the background. And then we've got our hellebore. Just love that one. Just love those leaves as well. Just lovely. Again, all in the workshop. And we've got our hellebore here as well. So we'll just, there's a little bit of stenciling there, just so you can see. There's nothing like a video to show the detail of a project, just so that you can see that. There we go. And then two more cards. All in the workshop. This is the hellebore in in its entirety. I've got my 30 days stamp set there. You've got the dove. And just so you can see that. But it's a gorgeous floral. If you love your colouring. If you don't love your colouring, you can stamp onto a patterned background. And it works in so many ways. And then the final sample, all in the workshop, workshop 101, wow, is this one. So we've got, again, from my October release, we've got the little beard, the hellebore, the stencil, and the hellebore, and the 30 days. And let's just lift this up a little bit. You can see a little bit of my numbered stencil in the background as well. Sometimes you can't pick that up in photographs. So I hope you like the samples to inspire you to create. I've just loved creating them. I've got to package these up so that they can go to the TV. Let's just place those all back. This one was great fun to create, just lovely to create. I've not got enough room on my desk. Right. What do I want to do now? Do you know, I think we'll use this stamp set. I just thought, why don't we create a little project? There's nothing like having a go at something. So we'll create with the shadowed heart so i'm going to take the shadowed heart and i'll place this onto an a5 acrylic block so let's just grab that now i've done no prep for this card i've done no cutting out so i'm just going to go with the flow to be honest I'm literally going with the flow. Let's move this white card because you're not going to see anything. And what I've got is I've got a piece of Pink Frog smooth card and it is four inches by six inches. Right. Purple delight. So I'm just going to go with the flow. So it's four inches by six inches and I've got verdant which I just need a piece of scrap card let me just grab a piece of scrap card just so I can wipe off the ink pad just because it's got a little bit of the grey on there just to clean that up a bit there we go so then I'm going to add the verdant all over my stamp set. 
So this is the shadowed heart, like so. Oh, and I've just, I've got, a, I've got a, believe it or not, a brandy glass for another technique, and I've, I've just tinkled it because it's crystal, and that, that it just sort of did a little tinkle there. So I'm using the verdant, and you can see I'm tapping quite a bit with that ink. And then I'm going to use Purple Delight. I'm going to tap the purple just over the heart, just so that it looks something like that. So I'm then going to take the heart, there we go, and just stamp that. Now, we're stamping onto the white card, so just give that a little bit of time just to absorb into the cardstock. Just give that a little time. And if you keep one hand still and then just press around your stamp set, just give it a little press. Keep that hand in place and just give it a little bit of pressure. And then you can just curl the stamp set. There we go. And just look at that. Just a beautiful, beautiful stamp set. Now you have to be aware you've added the green, which dulls down a bit of the purple. That was the whole point. That's why I did it. So, just so you can see that. Let me just grab, have I got another piece of fork? Because I want to show you something, four by six, bear with me. So I've just cut another four by six. Actually, which one is it? That one. Now, if you take the purple, so we'll add the purple. And then you take the verdant. Just remember, obviously, you're going to get some of that verdant on that oh spit it out Tracy you're going to get some of that purple onto your verdant and all you do is just rub it off on a piece of scrap card and it'll come back to normal again there we go but I like to just show you the way it changes There we go. And this is why you have to be aware of colours. So let's just lift that up. Now, I'm doing this on purpose. Can you see, you've got the purple here. And the minute you add the green, it goes into brown shades. So that's why you always have to be aware of what you're doing and if that's exactly what you want. So I want this one, the, the sort of the browny purpley colour. And then I want a heart in the purple. So you have to be aware when you're mixing colours what you're going to get. But for me, that's purposely done. So let's just add that. So I've got sort of tiny mixes of purple, brown and green. There we go. That's it. And what I'm going to say now is, look at that. That in itself, sort of a second generation, is lovely in itself. The second generation. Let's grab 
our scissors and I'm always a, a, belie a believer in playing around because for instance that's a happy accident that was a second generation part of the purple but doesn't it look lovely so we'll just experiment with that so sort of go around the heart in the distressed manner that I have done it I might just add that little heart look I've even missed the heart here doesn't matter let me just grab that I was so concentrating on that other heart that I nearly cut the piece off so just cut this out and, and sort of cut it out so it's a little a little distressed the way I've designed it I just cut that out a little bit distressed So we can lay that over the top and there's little bits of purple sort of around the edge here. But then I'm going to grab another piece of card, which I've been now just chucking on the floor. And then this is why you play and this is why you play with colours as well. So we had this purple. So let's stamp like so. So we'll just stamp that. Doesn't I don't, I doesn't I'm not looking for the image, so we'll just take that off quite quickly and then see if even with the because the VersaFine Claire's stay wetter longer, if you get a second generation print. So let's see if you get enough of a second generation print. Yes, you do. How good does the second generation print look? Don't you think? So let's grab a ruler. And this is why you play around. So let's just take the second generation And this is why sometimes I just come on my YouTube channel and have a play. Sometimes not necessarily with something in mind. So you can There we go. So you've got sort of second generation print which is just lovely so what size card so i will decide what size card i want to place that on because i've got the torn edges just a sort of i didn't tear the top edge so just to give it that torn look i'll just distress The edges of the scissors so now you've got one that looks completely different to the other one doesn't it looks completely different and also you've got sort of a brownie purple color that you've created there because it has got in real life it's got purple tinges in there as well if you want you can just color in the brown um, you see now this is why I have to have a hundred million pieces of card. Do I prefer that one? I think I prefer that one, but I've decided against both. So let's grab another piece of card.
and what i'm trying to show you is how i work how something is off the cuff so a second generation we've seen here we've got a second generation which i'm going to use on a different card you see it looks nice sort of like this doesn't it but i don't want that either so we'll, so now we've have we're playing around no prep and you've got one two three backgrounds no prep whatsoever so what i'm going to do is move those you have to you have to play so let's just give that a bit of a clean you have to play because and also when you're mixing colors you have to know what you're mixing and what you're using together so let's take the green now on its own just add this to the stamp set and this is the verdant and what you should do is really play around with your designs so I've got the green on there and what I'm trying to show you is what I do at home with my stamp sets this is what i do i literally just play around with some colors and suddenly you end up with a card coming together so now i've got this background which i can add this to and now i'm going to cut out this i'm so you could create a card from that Obviously, what I'm doing is showing you how I create a design, how it comes together and how I can work off the cuff creating something. Because just experimenting with colours gives me three different sort of combinations. I'll just cut that out. And I like to show you how to play. Sometimes you don't always have to make something. So let's just add that here. Just so. And what I'm going to show you is you can stick that back together. And now I've got another background. And I will use that, definitely. So I've got another background. Just love it. So you can place that on there. And this here like so just so that I've got that you could even this is how I play so if I take this one I can then add that to here and that to here so that looks a nice rich background this is how you play what you can do is I'm trying to show you how I create. So I've got this plain green one. I can place this over the top and have the green showing. Also, the one where I use the green and the purple, I can add, and that works. Look at that. I will do that as a card. That works rather nicely. So what we'll do is we will, we will what? Where's my adhesive? Tracy does oh it's here that's because I'm so excited about the release I hadn't planned on creating a card but this is the bit I love where you play but you've got no intention of playing anyway now this is the waste it's even got a tear in it so this is the waste Place that over like so. Now don't squash it down so that it's got that dimension. 
me lift this up for you just so that you've got that dimension now this has got the tear in here you saw me add that it's the waist okay still got that background here but that is the waist and this was a happy accident a second generation you saw me do that so let's now i like to add dimension to my cards you don't have to add dimension if you don't wish so i'm going to sort of offset that a little bit with a little bit of pin flare and then just add pin flare here and we'll just i can faff a little bit with the pin flare which is lovely there we go let's just push that up to the top again no prep no prep whatsoever just enjoying the play right we've then got let's move them out of the way the petunia stamp set let's take that little petunia grab our border acrylic block and let's grab some scrap of card so we need a bit more than that so let's grab a bigger piece of card i haven't got two cards cut but hey ho so i'm then going to please tell me no i haven't got my black ink Again, that's because I hadn't planned on making a card, but when inspiration strikes, so I'm just going to take the petunia, and if we stamp that, just so I can show you in its entirety, just to show you how that works just as a floral for you to colour in. Now I think that is beautiful, just as something you wanted to colour in, tiny bit of washi, little bird, done. You can send a little note or a bookmark and it just works beautifully. Let's just stamp another. Not that where Tracy's got much room in here, I have to say. So let's take another one. Now, I've done no prep, so I'm going to have to cut out. But I think that's what I should be doing. I should be showing you how you can use these products and how having a play then sparks off another idea. And I'm, I'm trying to show you that by doing it off the cuff. So let's just cut... I like to work with a smaller piece of card don't like cutting out with huge pieces of card so I'm going to cut the floral I'm going to leave a little white border now it's probably best if you color then cut out once the color is dry especially for like me you're going to use ink tense pencils Am I using ink tense pencils? I can't. I'm using whatever's on my desk. So let's just cut those out. So I'm leaving a little white border. There we go. Just take that. You don't have to cut out the twiddly bits if you don't wish. But it also shows you that sometimes what you think is scrap or a second generation print can sometimes be the best. Let's just colour. Cut. 
So we'll just cut this out and then we'll add a bit of colour. I'm going to try and find that A7 stamp set for you that this also goes with because I never design just haphazardly. So I will just try to grab that out. Now, if you don't want the little bit here, then don't cut it out. I do. And I'm hoping you'll just forgive me because I haven't had these cut out because I really wasn't planning on doing this. But I just think that's what inspiration's about. If you feel like doing it, then go for it. There we go. So I've got my petunia, which for one card. Let's cut out the petunia for the next card. And you can always fast forward this bit where I am cutting out. Let's cut around here. I find creating takes me into my own little world. And I tell you what, if you want to lose a few hours in the day, start creating or doing what I've just done, stamping in different colours just for the sake of stamping. And trust me, two hours later you're like, where's the time gone? So if you want to lose track of the time, definitely do a bit of creating. Sometimes I go down and Ian will say, you've been gone hours. Because <laughs> I've just shut myself away upstairs. He's probably thinking, yes, you do a bit more crafting, Tracy. Give me a bit of peace. It's more like what it is. So I'm using my Pergamorno scissors because it just lets me get in some of those little fine bits. Let me just cut that out. So I've got my cards and package ready just to send off. So the Abs and Janet have got the samples on the counter. And then I suddenly decide to go and create another one. It's me all over this is. Really is. Let's just cut that out. And if you leave a little white border rather than go right to the edge, it just makes it a little bit easier for you to cut out. There we go. So we've got our little petunias. Now let me see if I can find that stamp for you. She says with the samples in the way. Uh, let's see if I can. I don't think it's that one. It's probably better if I get my iPad. If I get my iPad and then I can show you the stamp. Let's go to photos. And let's see if I can find that stamp for you. It's definitely easier than me looking through. Um, there it is. There you go. So this petunia here goes with, come on Tracy, the packaging. Tracy can't find now, there you go. So this petunia here also goes with that which is stamp set 929. So I think it's important to show you those things because sometimes 
you know, we just, that's why I like my YouTube channel, because I can just do whatever I please. And then you can fast forward or watch or whatever. So we've got our two cards here that you can see. And I'm going to add this petunia to it. So I've got, what have I got? So I have got Dusky Purple, which is 0730. I've then got Thistle 0720. And then I've got Red Violet that nobody can read. Oh, crikey. It's Red Violet anyway. So I'm going to use the dark colour, which is Dusky Purple. And I'm just going to add... Now, these are my Inktense pencils. And can you see this professional way that I'm doing it? I'm just scribbling some of that dark one on there. I'm then going to use the second colour, which is Thistle. And just... This is what I love about Inktense pencils, which you will see. So I'm just scribbling in a circular motion. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Real life. And then I'm going to add the red violet. And just add the red violet. Like so, and just add the red violet. I'll worry about the little thingy one after, but that doesn't look like nothing on earth, does it? But it's just, this is why I love ink tense pencils. So grab a bit of water and Tracy will check her brush because I've done a workshop and it won't be clean. Now, when you're using the ink tense pencils, just have a clean piece of kitchen roll just so you've got your kitchen roll here just let me show you that and when you've got take your, a little bit of water on one side so i'm dipping my brush into a little bit of water it's got it's got no water in the water brush it's a broken water brush and i'm going to dab off the excess water don't use too much water and then i'm going to go in to that and just activate the colour. And this is what I love about Inktense pencils. They just come to life. And I don't have to be any professional colourist at all. There's nothing professional about that and it just comes to life now I don't leave it like that now I'm not adding any more water to this brush I'm just blending out whatever's there and I'm not going to add any more water now I'm going to go to the red violet now be warned do not ever ever go with a soaking wet brush to this pencil. You shouldn't do this really, but I want to pick up the pure pigment. And if you soak it, it'll go all the way up to your pencil and it's ruined. So I'm just using an almost dry brush just to add a little bit more of that color. So I'll pick up a little bit of water, take off the excess, and then I can just blend that out just to give it a little bit more depth of colour. So you have to pick up the colour sort of almost like it's your brush is dry. So pick that up and I'm just going to add a little bit more of that pigment. And my brush is definitely almost dry there's not much on there at all. I'm then going to go back to the darkest colour, which was the dusky purple. No more water on my brush. And I'm just going to add 
a little bit of the darkness. Now, if you sharpen your pencils, you can then use the sharpening, spritz the sharpenings onto, put, place the sharpenings onto a piece of card, and then you can spritz the sharpenings with water and you'll get a background as well. So I'm just adding a little bit of the darkness just to that flower. And this is what I absolutely love about Inktense pencils is you don't have to be a colorist. So I can go back in then and I can take the darkest color and I can just add a little bit of the darker color, just neat, just to give a little bit more dimension. Now it's important that you let those dry a bit. Where's my gel pen? Now I like to add touches of white. Now for me, it's best if you let that dry a little bit or dry with your heat tool, because there's no point me trying to add the white. But when you add the white, so if I add some little, little dots, it just sort of brings your floral to life. It gives it more life just if you add those little touches of white. And you can see I've not coloured this little petal here because I'm deciding whether I want to keep it in white. <laughs> So I'm then going to add this with some dimension, just lifting it up. It will be lifted up. And in this one, it is going to be placed inside here, like so. So let's add, let's just tip everything up. So we'll just add a little bit of adhesive just to the base here just so that it does catch and then I'll take a little bit of my pin flare just to give the petal a little bit of lift make sure there we go make sure that sort of sticks out and then I need to I'll do the other one in a minute. Let me just... Honestly, I've got so many things lying around. Let's grab a little bit more. don't know where that water went. I'm just going to... Where's the palest one? So just pick up the palest one. And this is what I love about Inktense pencils. You can still keep adding over the top it just it works so nicely and that's what i love about the intense pencils you can keep going and adding so this was a piece of scrap just love it and this here is what we're going to add here so we'll just add a little bit on the stem then we'll take that pin flare and you can see I'm just creating two cards from nothing really just add don't press it down to just make sure it does grab hold I like these sticking up a little bit just because it gives a little bit more life. So then let's add some splatters before we add some wording. I can bring them both in. So let's add. Now, when you're struggling with your splatters, start pumping the pen and make sure you've given it a shake because there's no point trying to splatter that pen if you haven't pumped it a little bit. So let's go onto the paler one. There we 
we go. So this is two cards we've not even planned on making. And then you've got this on here. Petunia. Let's just see if we can use it. So I can add my petunia here. So let's cut the other one out as well. We'll cut that out as well. Let's just straighten that edge up. And then we'll just grab a piece of scrap card. I can tell I'm enjoying myself because I just want to keep adding and keep adding. Um, so we'll take our Posca pen and we'll just add a faux mat. Now I've got them both caught. There we go. And I'm just doing it on the white card. Saves me clearing up. That's why. So I'm just going to add black mat with the Posca pen that one I didn't even catch there we go and then we can take our little take our gel now you don't have to add the dimension if you don't want you can keep it all flat and not add any pin flare so I'll add that there so I can still see the little dove Take this petunia like so and just create that. So we've then got those either side. And these are the kind of cards. You see, I've still got this background left. And that's that's why you need to play. It's important that you play. Right. Let's just place this stamp back. And Tracy's only placing this stamp back because she's got so much mess everywhere. It's a nightmare. Can't actually see what I'm playing with. So let's place that back. You've got Petunia on here and today is a new adventure as well. So you've got the petunia on there. Let's just take this stamp set, like so. And just spending a little bit of time just placing these away because it clears my head just a little bit with having everything just all in the way. There we go. Right, so then, let me just grab, where are you? that one so we've got this a5 stamp set a6 where have i just put the do you know you can't make it up can you i'm like what have i just done with the heart one do you ever worry about yourself sometimes because i do i put the it is don't put things out the way because you can't find them so i'm going to take this hosta stamp set Let's just grab the hosta one. And I'm going to add that dove there. Now, normally, if you're planning a composition, you would have stamped the dove, dove first. Well, I haven't planned anything. So that's why I'm going with the flow. So I've got the dove. I'm going to ink that with black ink. Now, of course, normally you would stamp this once you'd placed your, before you'd placed your heart on. But I want this dove, so I'm having it. You can just cut it out if you wish. But obviously, if you're just watching the video and then doing the cards afterwards, well, you know that you need to stamp the dove first. There we 
like it. So I've got a lovely dove on there. Really, you should let the ink dry a little bit. So let's just give that a couple of seconds while we grab a scrap of card. Stamp it again. Just make sure your hands are clean. I know when I got all excited about being creative, sometimes I can get ink all over my hands. So then we'll just cut this dove out, but I'm not leaving a white border. I always move my card when I'm cutting out. It's just far easier. Far easier. And I'm cutting this one out because it's going to be, I can't stamp onto the other piece because if you remember, it's the waist and I've made it 3D, so I can't stamp onto it because I'll just squash it all. And we don't want to do that. There we go. And then before I add this, I've just got a piece of cotton dry foam with black ink on, just to add a little bit of black ink to the edges. So we'll take our, I've got more white stuff on me than anything. So we'll take our gel pen. And if you let things dry, it works just far better. So I'm just adding some touches of white just to the dove. Just to give it a few highlights. And then... We'll give this dove a little bit of dimension on this one. So this is being added. Don't want to see that glue. But this is being added here. Like so. And the other one is flat. Doesn't take much for me to get in a total mess. So we'll just put the dove back. Now be aware, if you're picking up those stamps, you're going to get black fingers. So just be aware of that. Okay. So we've got cards here. And then... Let's just place those back because they're in my way. Where's my little grey ink tense pencil, which I definitely put here somewhere. And when you stop the video, you can always find everything straight away. Right, that's it. I've got my little ink tense pencil, and I'm just going to add a little bit of shading just around my dove. So let's just make sure my brush is clean because I know it isn't. It's got purple on there. And just add a little bit of shading just underneath. And in real life, you can see it. Just wipe that up. Just so you can see this. In real life, you can see that. There's a little bit of shading on there. Just love that. So let's, I've, I haven't got cards for both of them because I hadn't planned it. So I've got a black mat for this because it was four by six and I'm going to place this one on a black mat, but it doesn't matter. I will put that on a black mat and show you because that's me all over. I have to finish the card and there is no rush. When you're creating, there is no rush. Let's just add, just get the left hand side just right before I place that on. 
just so that you can see that. Just so you can see. I just love that. Just love it. Just love that. So then we'll add that to a five by seven card blank. So I just love that. So there you go. So with my ephemera, I can see messages coming through. So it looks like my butterfly ephemera may also be on the one day special, but you'll see when you when if you watch the program. So we add that to the five by seven card blank, like so. Look at that. From a card that I'd not even planned on doing. Just love it. And then I'm just going to cut a mat for this. So bear with me. I'm really good. So I'm just cutting this mat. going to cut the mat which is four and a quarter by six and a quarter and I think I've got a card that I can cut so we'll do that as well there we go so I've got card for this mainly because I like you to see things finished it's just me all over so what I'm going to do with this one I'll tell you why because you've got this black here a little bit of black here and it's it's paler in the background so I'm just going to add a few little splatters let me just move that round of black posky just just a few delicate splatters of black pop 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 blah, 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 black posky now you need to make sure that that black posky is wiped up and you you need to make sure your hands are clean because black posky smears everywhere so don't do as i'm doing make sure that it's dry first just there we go and just add that like so now this was made from a torn piece that you've got the tear there and that was made for a, a torn piece so we add that then to a five by seven inch card blank there we go so just add that we'll place this on our card blank now, don't go and touch that black posca, especially if, like me, you're a little impatient and you're adding it to the card blank. Don't go and touch that black posca until it's dry. So let's bring these in. So that is two cards off the cuff with the petunia. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed the process and I'll see you all soon. Love to all. Bye for now.